Hey everyone, this is Bob Kovacs at Wirefly, and today I would like to talk more about the Kyocera Echo. This is a very unusual phone for the Sprint network. I want to point out that it is a 3G phone. It uses Sprint's 3G EVDO Rev A network. That's a pretty good network, but it is not nearly as fast as Sprint's WiMAX 4G network. So this is a 3G phone. And it's the Kyocera Echo. It is very unusual in that you take a look at it and it seems to be a small cell phone, kind of uh, black and silver with some nice bright chrome trims. Uh, and it seems to be a little offset. But the big deal here is that when you open it up and spin it around, it makes a something that kind of resembles a tablet. There you go, that's how they go together. So it's a very interesting, very different cell phone. Definitely not for everybody. This is definitely for a limited audience. But I want to take a little bit more of a look at it today, show you some of the things that it can do. I don't know that this is going to qualify as a review, but maybe it is a first overview of the Kyocera Echo because this, this uh, phone slash tablet can do a lot of things. Okay, first of all, I'm going to put it back together like this. And a number of you have commented about how thick it is. Wow, man, that's so thick. Okay, well, here is on the Sprint Network, this is the Samsung Epic 4G. Take a look at the Epic 4G. The Epic 4G is longer and it's wider. So as from that standpoint, the Epic 4G is a bigger phone. It's taller and wider than the Kyocera Echo. And the thickness, well, the Epic 4G, as you can see, is just a little thinner than the Kyocera Echo. Uh, it's, the uh, Echo is definitely a little thicker, but not a heck of a lot. When you get down to this end of the Epic, it kind of fattens out a little bit. So that end is probably pretty close to the thickness of the Kyocera Echo. And there you can see. So, uh, yeah, it's thick. But it's maybe not as thick as uh, you know some of the other phones that are out there. Of course, the um, Epic 4G is thick because it has a keyboard, and it's an excellent keyboard too. The Kyocera Echo does not have a keyboard, at least uh, doesn't have a keyboard in the physical sense that the uh, Epic 4G has. But it does, of course, have the dual screens. And that is the appeal of the Kyocera Echo. As you can see, it supports uh, um, live wallpapers. This is the famous Nexus wallpaper there. And uh, one of the things I said is that it does support some manner of a uh, keyboard. If I go ahead and touch Google here and want to search on Google, there you go. It puts up a keyboard on one screen while the search window is in the other screen. And this is a nice big keyboard easy to use. So if I wanted to search on Wirefly, I can do that. And by the way, this also supports um, uh, Swipe. So if I wanted to use Swipe and I wanted to say Encyclopedia, bang. Uh, so this does support Swipe, a very nice feature. I enjoy using Swipe now that I've gotten used to it. So. Uh, this is the Kyocera Echo. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the main screen, pull this apart, flip it back, and I'm going to show you that in more detail in just a moment. But let's take a little uh, tour around the phone. Three sides of the phone have no controls on it. All of the controls are on the one side here. Of course, this is a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. I love this thing. This is an external slot for the micro SD card and it's got a micro SD card in it. I don't know what size this is. I looked uh, before and it didn't say anything anywhere about how big the card is. This is an 8 gig micro SD card slot. 8 gig micro SD card. And the phone comes with 8 gig of onboard storage as well. So that means the Kyocera Echo has 16 gigs of onboard storage. Okay, I'm getting a little hung up trying to get this guy back in there. So that's the way it goes in. So it goes in with the label facing the same direction as the screen. Next to the uh, slot for the micro SD card is the on off switch. The switch also puts the phone to sleep. Here's the volume up down rocker and this is the micro USB port for charging and data interchange. 
This here is actually a loop that you can put a security cable into to help try to keep your phone a little more secure. So uh, that's kind of an unusual thing for a cell phone. You normally see that on things like, uh, you know, on uh, outboard hard drives and on computers, that sort of thing. Okay, so here's the Kyocera Echo. To open it up, you lift it up like this, and the, uh, this, this screen here is hinged. So it just spins around, and you can use it like this with the upper screen tilted at you. So if I want to do a Google search, I just hit the Google window, and there it brings up the keyboard, and I can type on this tiny little screen there. Of course, if I want to just make it a kind of a tablet screen, I flatten it and put it in, and now you have a tablet. Of course, there is this division between the two screens. Let's call that a mullion. And I'm going to go ahead and go on the web now and show you a web page. Uh, earlier today, this is telling me, by the way, how I can separate the screens. I'm going to go ahead and do that. But first, I want to show you that, uh, you know, I went to the Washington Post and was reading news stories on the Washington Post. And it's very nice for doing that. But if you want to do two different things on the phone at the same time, hold your fingers down on the screens, and up pops up a couple of windows that ask what you want to do. Let's say you want to make a phone call down here, touch the phone icon, and now you can do a phone call down here, even as you watch the Washington Post's website up here. So you can still do everything you want to do on that. As, at the same time, you can be making a phone call and call whomever you want to call. So I think that that works kind of neat. And there's an easy way to switch what you want to do from screen to screen. Let's go back to the phone. If you want the phone on the top screen and not the bottom screen, what you need to do is hold down again, and it puts up this little window, and you can interchange. Now the phone is there, and uh, the Washington Post is down here. So that's just a couple of the features about the Kyocera Echo. It's got a 1 gigahertz processor. It has a 5 megapixel camera, and it can do a 720p HD, and it has an LED flash as well. And it also comes with an extra battery, which I thought was a pretty nice feature. So uh, there's been some concern that the two screens use a lot of power. I imagine that they would. But it does come with a spare battery so that you can swap the battery out. Getting into the battery is not all that hard. So it runs Android 2.2, it's flash compatible, and when you open it up like this, you get a screen that's 800 pixels by 960 pixels. And that compares pretty favorably with some tablets that are out there. For instance, the Samsung Galaxy Tab is uh, 600 by, I think, 1280. So uh, that's uh, 600 is less than this dimension here. This is 800 on the Kyocera Echo. But of course, 1280 is considerably more pixels in this dimension. But I'm just saying that, uh, you know, it does compare to a tablet. The Using it with this division here is a little funky. Takes a little getting used to. Let's go ahead and go to some of the apps and let's go to navigation. And let's tell it that I want to go to Five Guys. Five Guys. Okay, now it's going to find Five Guys for me. Navigate to Five Guys, and you see what it's like to deal with that. So I'm going to go to Navigation, and it's going to find the nearest Five Guys. That's the closest one. And it shows a map. And here we go. Of course, I can scroll around the map. It's spread across two screens. Now what I've learned is, if you want to do the map on one screen and the phone on another screen or some other application on another screen, it doesn't allow you to do that. If I do the two finger thing on the map, it doesn't do it on the map. So uh, it doesn't always work the way you think it's going to work. And I'm going to keep working with the Kyocera Echo to figure out some of what it can do. One of the things I hope to do in another video is to demonstrate what it's like to play a game on the Kyocera Echo. So that is a first look and a quick overview of the Kyocera Echo. This is on the Sprint Network. It's a 3G phone, not a 4G phone. This is Bob Kovacs here at Wirefly. Thanks for watching.